Lately, we've been focusing our Elden Lore videos on various Tarnished and NPCs, but we haven't forgotten the vast number of enemies that piqued both our and the community's interest. We received a comment on our last video from TC calling out a particular enemy we had taken interest in during previous research, but never followed up on. After some digging, we found that while there isn't a lot of written explanation for their existence, if you pay attention to the smaller details in the world around them, there's an interesting story behind this seemingly innocuous boss enemy, and possibly even a connection to the Albanorix. Today, we're going to talk about the Dragonkin soldiers, where they come from, how they were made, and the use of context clues in determining their origins. Before we dive into the mysterious origins of the Dragonkin soldiers, we wanted to ask you to click that subscribe button. By hitting subscribe and smashing that bell, you ensure that you'll never miss out on our Elden Lore content. We hope you become a member of this incredible community that we've been able to build. The conversations and the comments on various lore and theories is always fun to read, and it's incredible to see how many repeat viewers are engaging with each other. We hope to see your thoughts below, and with that, let's get back to the topic at hand. The Dragonkin soldier's name almost seems as if it could be a misnomer. Their bodies are much more human than dragon aside from their heads and almost skeletal wings. They also seem to be draped in some kind of cloth, almost as if they were wearing clothing, which seems odd considering that all of the dragons we encounter in the game are unclothed. There's very little we can learn about these enemies from their appearance alone aside from this fact. They are clearly not dragons, and overall, have a more humanoid form than any dragon we can encounter in the lands between. So the question becomes, how exactly are they kin to dragons when it seems as though someone placed a dragon head and decrepit wings on a large human body? There are a couple of theories that we've seen that we'd like to talk through before getting into our own. First is that the dragonkin soldiers are what's left over after someone engages in dragon communion one too many times. It makes sense that overindulging in Dragon Communion would create a half-human, half-dragon. However, the lore in-game does not support this theory. If we look at the Magma Wirum Scale Sword, it tells us, It said these land-bound dragons were once human heroes who partook in Dragon Communion, a grave transgression for which they were cursed to crawl the earth upon their bellies, shadows of their former selves. This lays out clearly that when someone pushes Dragon Communion to its absolute limits, they don't become a hybrid, they become a Magma Wirum. Thus, this theory can't be the truth behind the Dragonkin soldiers. Another idea is that these hybrids could be the result of humans and dragons commingling during the early years of Godwin's Dragon Cult. This could be supported by Lanciax's Glaive and Vike's Dragonbolt, which tell us, Lanciax was the sister of Fortisax. It is said that she took the form of a human to commune with the knights as a priestess of the ancient dragon cult. And, of all the knights, Vike the Dragon Spear was the one Lanciax loved the most. While various magics can tell the story of how dragons and humans lived in some form of peace within Godwin's dragon cult, none explicitly say that these two forms of life were able to be together in any way that could create hybrid children. While this is certainly up for debate, we believe the various item descriptions related to the Dragonkin themselves can put this theory to rest. Upon defeating the Dragonkin Soldier of Noxtella, we are granted the Frozen Lightning Spear Incantation. The description of this magic tells us, the Dragonkin were born in the Eternal City, where they knew no sky, no true lightning. Instead, Ice Lightning was their weapon. So it seems as though it's not possible for the dragonkin to have been born of the commingling between dragons and humans due to their being born in the Eternal City. However, now that we know where they were born, the question comes back around to how. We believe that these towering enemies were actually created in the same way as the Albanorix, through the use and experimentation of silver tears by the citizens of Noxtella. There is one particular line of flavor text that can be found on the Dragonscale Blade that we believe solidifies this theory. The Dragonscale Blade reads as follows. A weapon made by sharpening a gravel stone scale, thought to be the source of ancient dragon immortality, into an unclouded blade. 
Alas, the dragonkin soldiers never attained immortality, and perished as decrepit, pale imitations of their skyborn kin. So we know that this blade, or really any dragon scale weapon, is made through the sharpening of gravelstone scales, the source of a dragon's immortality. And there are only four enemies in Elden Ring that can drop these scales. The first, of course, is the Faramazula dragon. This makes perfect sense. An eternal dragon would drop the scale. Second is the Azula Beastman. Again, these beastmen live amongst the dragons. It's not unreasonable for them to have harvested stray scales. Third are the miners of the Yulo Annex Tunnel. This is definitely more interesting as they are mining a tunnel known for extraterrestrial beings that came from the stars. Finally, there's the final enemy, the Silver Tear. But not just any silver tear, only the variation that explodes in lightning. So we know that Gravelstone is connected to Dragon Immortality. The Dragonkin were born in Noxtella, and the Dragonkin never truly attained immortality. We believe this is because they were imperfect, much like the other race we know that has close ties to, and was possibly created from, silver tears, the Albanorix. While relating the massive dragonkin soldiers to the Albanorx may seem like a stretch, there is one more contextual clue to their relationship. The dragonkin soldiers cannot stand on their legs. There are only six dragonkin soldiers in Elden Ring. One in the Siofa River, one in the Eternal City, one in the Lake of Rod, and three spiritual dragonkin in the Consecrated Snowfields none of these soldiers are able to properly use their legs. This ties together the idea that they were created through the use of a silver tear, and why they were never able to achieve immortality. Life forms made using silver tears are all imperfect, and the telltale sign of this is their lame legs. Not to mention, what would the spirits of dragonkin soldiers be doing in the consecrated snowfield, if not seeking out others it would consider kin? Not dragons, but other beings created through the use of silver tears. We believe all these small clues come together to form a picture of dragonkin soldiers being made for the explicit purpose of the Eternal City harnessing the power of dragons for their own personal use. However, because the scientists or magicians of these cities never figured out how to create pure beings through the use of the silver tear, the dragonkin are another imperfect life form, and oddly, a cousin to the Albanorix. This means the dragonkin soldiers are likely no more after we defeat the few that can be found in the lands between, as unlike the Albanorix, they have neither the means or intelligence to create a new generation. Thank you for joining us today as we shared our theories on the dragonkin soldiers. We believe our line of thinking is sound and feel strongly that the various clues we've tied together create an airtight narrative on the history of these enemies. We also wanted to get your feedback and thoughts on whether or not we properly debunked the other prevailing theories. Comment with your thoughts on the Dragonkin soldiers and let us know if you think we're off base. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss out on our lore content. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.